And, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Cushman, for, for this wonderful opportunity to share the dialogues and uh, engage in conversations about cross-cultural teaching. Uh, uh, my passion has been about cross-cultural language literacy teaching, how it's related to teacher learning as well. But uh, regardless of social class issues and the cultural confusion notion of, of language uh, and literacy learning influences how parents socialize their children in, in their literacy learning at home, which literacy education. So they, are, they were really at war uh, about how to best educate their children. So the, the issue is that uh, Chinese parents really, and, and Canadian teachers in, in, engage in kind of what I call silent power struggles. So they each promote their own ways of literacy, language and literacy teaching, and, and they really refuse to talk to each other. And um, another important point is that it, among the teachers, they, they see that using L1 as the reason for failure to learn L2. So this is a very important point. The question arose from my research at the time is that who adapts and to what? And so the teachers usually say, well, this is our system. This is how our system is. If you don't like it, and then don't come. So that's the common attitude. I'm very familiar, right? In the meantime, I found that school literacy is also seen as singular. So it's multiple and first singular. So this is a typical, this is actually a, a description of a US classroom in a, in a a school called an international school, by the way, by a teacher. So it says that the a curriculum says that there are no pictures of scenes. But in this school, it says it, because it's so multicultural, then we don't really talk about differences. Okay. So many students are doubly disadvantaged, especially for those that fail to learn both um, their first <coughs> language and and English. So. In terms of first language loss, because they, they were not, their first language is not seen as something positive to their, uh, to their learning. So this would be Hilary Jenks and a lot of critical um, theorists would call access without diversity, okay? Because school failed to capitalize their first language and, and literacies. Another phenomenon is that this, these children also failed to learn uh, second language. So they're, they're not proficient in second language. And so, this phenomenon will be called uh, diversity without access. So you have diversity, but you don't have the access. What, um, what Adele Pitt, Lisa Adele Pitt, in a, 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 a urban educators, uh, talk about the code of power. Um, so if you don't have the access to the code of power, then you can't succeed. You have to think about diversity not as a problem, but as an asset. So, uh, think about students' skills, abilities in their first language as funds of knowledge, not as, as, as a barrier to their participation in campus life or in learning English. And uh, we also want to see the difference, cultural difference, styles in learning in styles as equally va uh, the valuable ways of learning. So there are many ways to learn. It's just a different ways of learning. So, so those are the um, prerequisites to, to engage this kind of um, learning.